Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monero Space interview today. We are on with the Travel Law team, where it's great to have Ben and Shane here, two members of the team. Ben is the Chief Marketing Officer, and Shane is the Head of Business Development. Um, of course, you're on with myself, Justin, and Seth here, too, at Seth for Privacy. We are happy to be sharing information about this merchant that supports Monero payments. So, Ben, how about we start with your introduction? With You, you got your cool uh, board games in the background. You know, what do you do for, you know, what is Travel Law? Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, Travola.com, we're, we're, uh, we're an OTA, an online travel agency that sells hotels, flights, uh, tours, activities. Um, and we let people uh, pay with cryptocurrencies, uh, including Monero. Um, Monero is uh, really coming along quite well for us, uh, actually. A little teaser as to why we might be here. Um, in addition to sort of the, the benefits of um, an online travel agent thing, you can come along, search, uh, 3 million uh, plus products around the world and, and pick and choose and pay. Uh, we also have our own uh, cryptocurrency, which is like our travel rewards program. So you get give backs from that. You can stake that and sort of earn more discounts and things as you go along. Um, as, as you know, frequent flyer points or rewards points with hotel chains with workhouses is, is, is uh, crypto based. Awesome. Yeah, it's good. It's good to hear that you are um, offering the service to people to make cryptocurrency payments. Did you start specifically as a company that worked to fill the need of finding some way to convert crypto to use for travel? Or did you start as a business that was focused on travel and then really added crypto payments as one of your differentiating factors? No, I, uh, sorry. It was the first one. The first one was like uh, was, was, was got it got it perfectly. Um, we started with with that. We wanted to make it easy for uh, crypto holders to travel the world um, and and add that utility to to their currencies. And that started for us back in 2017. And at the time, we did just have hotels, and we've expanded out to to more things. Um, but the travel and we're adding the travel products in um, later. So yeah, very much uh, crypto first in in, uh, in in the idea. No, it's great to hear. Um, when did you start taking Monero? Uh, Monero has been uh, one of the tokens that have been with us uh, since really the early days. It would be be one of the original tokens um, that we had on. So I can't put an exact timeline on it, but I would say by 2018, uh, Monero has been a, been a payment option uh, on Tribala.com. I'll add that uh, Monero has been a pretty strong payment option behind uh, behind our native uh, cryptocurrency, AVA, uh, along with the, the stable coins, BTC and Ethereum. Uh, but we've actually just hit uh, $100,000 in uh, a monthly payment up you know, month to date right now with Monero. So we're super excited to, to express that milestone uh, with the Monero community. Uh, we've hit $100,000 and it's not even at the uh, the end of the month. Yeah, that's the first time. First time Monero's uh, broken six figures, uh, which is fantastic. I think a, a good bit of the Monero community who went to DEF CON might have used Travala to, to travel. So maybe we, we helped out that milestone a little bit. Well, thank you guys. Uh, it's fantastic. But yeah, next next time, let's get all you guys in there. I want to know how how doing it is before we can break a million bucks. No, that, that's fantastic. It's good to hear that. Is this um, a really standout month for you all where this just sort of came out of nowhere or has usage been growing over time? Um, it's more usage is growing over time. Um, so yeah, it, it's pretty standard. Like the total numbers are pretty standard for us. Uh, it's not like it's a, it's a big month across the board or anything unusual. Uh, the statistical anomaly here is that, uh, yeah, you guys are, are spending and you, you seem to, to love what we have going on. And so thank you so much. Yeah, I think there's oh, good that's... harmony there between the Monero community being very kind of method of exchange, use cryptocurrency, like actually use it rather than just speculate with it. I think there's a really good, really good pairing there with Monero and services like Travala, other merchants, donations. Lots of things because there's such a big drive within the Monero community to actually be using Monero and not just speculate, which I know can kind of take over in Bitcoin and other other kind of uh, communities. But I, know, I think it's a good synergy there with with Travala. Yeah. So yeah. Is, is Monero one of your most used tokens? Can you help break that down for us? And when we have, when we make coin cons are coin cards on here, they usually break down a distribution every month, which a lot of people like to see. So can you give us a little bit 
of a peek behind the scenes in terms of what uh, amount of Monero use you're seeing besides just the you know hundred thousand that you you broke this this uh, this month. What what does that look like compared to the rest of your payment options on the platform? Is Monero a common coin or is it still just one that's kind of down the list? Um, I would say it's like upper middle tier generally, upper middle tier of the spread. Like the uh, the, the the king token is generally Bitcoin um, or our own token, more often Bitcoin. Um, we uh, we generally like uh, Dash can sometimes be quite high up there as well too. Uh, but Monero is always mentioned. Like there's not a month where there's not bookings made uh, in Monero. Um, and, and yeah, so, so it's probably the, the upper middle tier there as well. Uh, I would say, I would suggest, um, going off the top of my head, uh, I'm just punching some numbers in my head here now. Um, yeah, it would generally be below the 1%, um, of sort of the total revenue would be coming in, uh, from Monero, definitely. Uh, but, but it's a token we see on the books. Right, it's a token that, that that that's coming in enough that, that we're seeing those transactions come through, and in our sort of Telegram community, we have a live chat that sort of does show when it'll say like a user has just booked seven nights with X Y Z currency. You know, I, I do see Monero in there quite a fair bit when, when that's coming up. Um, so so there, there is there, there is some traction to it, um, and this month it's definitely it's probably uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but but it, it'll be in the top five tokens. Of the case it off that was spent this month. Top five. Yeah, and I believe it's actually uh, top three for the month right now. Um, okay. Yeah. That's good to hear. We always like when it was pretty high on the list. I mean, people are actually using it as a currency, which is kind of what it's for. <laughs> um, before we move on to other questions about Monero, can you give a little bit in more insight in just what type of general users use uh, Travala? Um, uh, whether it is like an international user, are they mostly US users? Um, are they usually planning big or trial small trips to your platform? Stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah. Oh, Shane, you can go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and, and and you know what? I think it's uh, I think it's pretty standard for the uh, the tourism industry. You're going to get the mass majority, where you're going to get a lot from um, from from the US. You're going to get a lot from the EU, the UK. Uh, we do have a growing user base in China. Um, and then uh, we do have a, a an arm in Australia, even though they're not a, not able to travel right now. There is uh, there has been some staycations and whatnot, uh, but before the pandemic, um, Australia was definitely taking off as well. Uh, and then India, UAE. So there's a, we it, it's kind of difficult to tell exactly where people are spending from, just based on the fact that people are using VPNs. But you can see where they're uh, where where they start their flights and where they're actually accommodating. Um, there's a decent amount of, of uh, like resort based uh, activity and hotels that are going to be beachfront, um, but a lot from uh, from the US and the EU UK. Got it. Well, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so let's move on to Back, back to Monero. So is Monero a token that you added early on and, and continue to support just because you're seeing volume come through it? Or is it a token that you saw as, you know, this is something that's unique and different. We want to have it incorporated on your platform. Can you walk through how you view Monero in relation to other tokens and why you feel it's important to have it as a payment option uh, on Travala? So I, I think there are, there are two parts from this to, to this answer, in my opinion. Um, the first part is what, what you guys have been saying throughout this call, you know, like you, you guys do encourage people to, to spend Monero and the, there's a bunch of tokens out there like just hodl forever, don't ever sell, hodl forever. You're going to be worth lots of money if you never sell this, you know, which you know, I, I have my opinions about that, which is I'm not sure how smart that is long term. Um, so Monero, you guys like, hey, we want to change the world. We actually want to have people spending this. We want to change the way people do use money is definitely a, um, a very sort of powerful pitch to us in the early days when we're looking to like, okay, how do we get revenue coming in the door? How do we get people booking and buying things? Um, which, which, you know, is, is just a, some strong fundamentals about your community and, and strong fundamentals uh, about your token. I know very, very top high level there. 
The second part to it of uh, how it ended up being on Tra- Travala.com so early is uh, one of the founders, one of the early guys back then, loved the token. Loved the token. That's what he was using to spend and travel and stuff himself. And so you had a, you had a great sort of uh, insider, if you will, who really wanted to see this and make it happen. Um, and and that, that would be uh, how, how you guys got, got to be one of the first. I always think that's pretty funny that we, we hear oftentimes a lot of stories where one outspoken person at the office just really cares about the narrow and just won't shut up about it. And eventually it just works its way up and in, into in the, the rest of the product. So it's kind of funny to see that uh, occur here too. I gotta go. I gotta echo that sentiment as well. Um, the the use case of Monero is definitely it's definitely helped by the fact that you're not on on uh, on your socials talking about it going to the moon and wait for this next announcement coming up and everything because then everybody's waiting uh, waiting for this next announcement around the corner because they think a pump is going to happen in their token. So we're it drives uh, drives away the utility of the the actual token. People are all uh, they are constantly waiting. To, uh, to actually go and spend. So the fact is you guys actually want people to go and spend the token, use it for utility, and it's uh, it's definitely been beneficial. How's the process actually been as far as integrating Monero initially? I mean, I know you were very early, so it's probably before a lot of other payment processors had support for Monero, um, but kind of how, how has that process been of supporting it throughout the years and maybe any kind of tips and tricks for other people who might be interested in, in supporting Monero for uh, for payments, well, I'll say it's probably one of the tokens that, um, and, and Shane, like, do jump in here if I'm wrong. We haven't really had any tech problems with Monero. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not one that, that we've ever sort of had um, liquidity issues that have like prevented spending, um, or you know, the, the transactions uh, just just seem to go through and it just seems to to work. Uh, so from from a non-technical point of view, which which is all I think Shane and I can offer you, we're not developers. Uh, it seems one of the easier tokens that, that we've had on the platform in terms of maintenance and stability uh, long term. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I'm not throwing shade here at like other tokens <laughs> at all. Um, it, it it just has been been trouble free for us. And uh, sort of with Shane and I, you know, we we do deal with uh, the 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 community a fair bit, or you know, the the teams when we sort of have these tech issues, and and that that can that's never fun for us. Uh, but even for our customer service team, when when there are sort of issues with with processing or the li- liquidity or these things as well, um, they're they're travel people first. So, you know, we we do kind of like stuff that we you know turn on and goes. Um, and that's definitely what we've experienced with uh, Monero. That's great to hear. Yeah, I just never really, I'm not somebody who accepts it for payments. I mean, I do like donations, but that's very small scale and just a static address. So it's good to hear from somebody who obviously is doing like actual volume and handling a lot of handling a lot of incoming payments that it's been been a pretty seamless experience so far. Yeah, and I'm pretty closely tied with the customer service team as well. And I haven't seen any complaints come through. So like Ben said, it's been very seamless. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Like outside of like looking at the uh, the results each month and seeing you guys are there, that's about the only time I see mention of you guys, uh, which is kind of a good sign. You know, like no news is good news uh, in these sorts of things. Yeah, I'm sure there's someone accepting payments. It's it's nice to not have to worry about that or constantly be concerned. Yeah, yeah I like people who just give us money and that's it. <laughs> yeah sometimes the boring nature is good i'm glad it's 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 the strength here monero's boringness in that respect yeah, um, yeah that's a feature you guys should pitch that more <laughs> monero the boring coin that works <laughs> um all right, so i know this isn't meant to be like a technical call but can you speak are you familiar a little bit with more how you accept payments? Do you receive, did you build out your own solution to accept Monero? Do you convert it in the back end? Is, is this a manual or automated process? Uh, do you know how high touch this is? Yeah, so, so high level. Uh, the, the way this works with Monero or any other sort of cryptocurrency is we've got to give the supplier fiat. Right? They've got to get fiat to cover their wages, to cover their... Um, uh, operating costs and things. So we, 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 it's basically an exchange transaction. So we will calculate what the cost of the room or the flight is uh, in Monero. 
um, or another token. Um, at that point of transaction, you know, the, the crypto sold, we get the fiat as the, uh, the supplier is paid. Got it. Got it. Um, when it comes to booking travel options, there's all sorts of rewards programs out there, right? You have your credit cards, you have your other sites that have their own rewards programs. There's generally a lot of competition out there. So besides just having an easier option for someone who wants to pay in crypto to purchase travel, um, I know you mentioned that you have your own rewards program, but what are the main reasons to book uh, with Travala compared to other, other sites? Yeah, beautiful. So as you progress through the tiers, as I mentioned, uh, you get uh, big, bigger discounts um, to, to the point that you, particularly hotels or activities and stuff, you're saving yourself a fair bit of money if you're in sort of the top tier, which is interesting. So in our rewards program, um, in terms of the five tiers, we have the largest density of people in that top tier uh, there as well. So that, that, that kind of just sort of shows you how attractive kind of getting the discounts and, and things are to, to the users. Now, for me, the biggest advantage we have over all these traditional rewards programs that you have here, let's, let's say a frequent flyer program, um, let's use that. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like with, with COVID-19, we saw uh, all around the world when COVID-19 hit, the airlines freeze their frequent flyer programs. All those rewards points that people had got through credit cards, through by flying, through whatever it was, they were frozen and you weren't able to move them. Um, you know, uh, they also can inflate the price of these these rewards program, they, these rewards points, what their value is and things you got to, they get to set it. So by ours being crypto based, um, you can sell it. You own the tokens. You own the tokens that get you in there. You can exit out if you want to. Um, you know, let, let's say COVID-19 had kept going and travel hadn't started to have these bouts of recovery and these things as well. You can get something for your points. Um, the other thing that we have as well is as more people, uh, you know, do start to use us and we, we've had some, some fantastic uh, traction as well too, um, just kind of constantly at shy of a couple of months, COVID-19 didn't slow us down just month on month on month uh, gains. Um, the more people we have on our platform, the more people earning the rewards points, the more scarcity of our token, you know, like uh, what, what, what you're locking up if things go well, uh, could be worth a fair bit of travel for you in the future. Um, which is something that isn't going to happen uh, with, with, say, a frequent flyer rewards program. Um, so for people who understand how, like some of those real sort of top level things about how cryptocurrencies work and love to travel, um, I think we're a really good option for them. And there isn't really anything out there in the market other than us. Now, there, there are a couple of other guys who are fundamentally doing exactly what we're doing. Um, but like just, just looking at similar web or SEM rush or any of these sort of comparison tools, we're gaining 99% of that market. We're working with Expedia. We're working with 600, uh, plus airlines around the world. We're the ones who have, um, activities and tours in 197 countries. We have more of what you want. Um, Add to that, and there is a product that I haven't mentioned here, uh, which which we would love to find some Monero whales. We have a, a luxury concierge service available as well. Now, what this is, this is where you can book private jets, private islands, uh, you know, the, the the holidays that we think movie stars and that stuff take as well, and that team there. We've got some of the, we, we gave jobs to some of the, the best people in, in travel um, over the last couple of years to plan these packages, to put these experiences together as well too. And that isn't an online self-service. That's a, you talk to a person, we get to know you, we get to know what your interests are, we get to know um, what you like to do for relax, what type of, um, you, like where you want to sit on a plane, uh, what type of car transfers you want. And so we give you all of that sort of experience and, and build you something um, that, 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 is, that, is, that is pretty amazing for what you want as well. So there's this, there, there is a service aspect and a lot of experience in travel um, that can, uh, that, that, that is worth a lot. Um, travel is a people business and, and it's a people business in the sense um, that, that the travel agent hasn't gone away. 
right? With all these online travel agencies and things that have been out there, they have not killed off the travel agent because there is nothing better than the passion and the experience of someone travel, giving you the advice of what to do from someone that they've been, that they know that they've experienced. And so we, we do provide that to our clientele as well um, in, in sort of those higher tiers. And that is something else that, that we offer uh, that, yeah, um, your Expedia is done. What do you think, Seth? Should we get private jets to the next Monero party in, uh, in, in Monero con Franco? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the goal. Ben thinks so. <laughs> well, one, along. one thing that uh, one thing to tack on to that there is with the agency model as well, there's there's just so much that is required for international travel right now for from a from a COVID perspective, knowing your uh, what what what's required from you. Uh, jumping from country to country, uh, like I've I've encountered it here in the last couple of months. I've been I went I went from Canada to the UK to Portugal, and now I'm in Costa Rica. And knowing what I actually I the the amount of research that I've had to do to 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 get into the UK to get into Portugal, I actually didn't get allowed into Portugal when I was trying to go from Canada directly there. So the agency is able to help with that type of perspective. And give you that type of feedback. What do you uh, What do you need for your trip upcoming? Um, and so, a lot of this self serve stuff and beating up, uh, winning on price, uh, as per historic, uh, like ha as it's been done historically, doesn't hold the same sort of merit now than it yeah. did even two years ago. So there, there is a lot of value that is with the agency model now. Yeah, and uh, I've seen studies as well too uh, that show. I think it was only a uh, sort of study of U.S. a big sample of U.S. travelers. Um, only thirty-five percent of U.S. travelers plan to use and uh, that were planning to travel plan to use an OTA. Only thirty-five percent. So that's sixty-five percent that are going back to that traditional model now of looking for for, for the agents to talk to them because of the situations that that Shane is, is talking about right now. Um, no, it, 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 it's going to be difficult to know exactly where that dem demographic lo lies or falls within Travala because everybody's pretty tech savvy. We posted a $10 million revenue here in Q2 and 70% of that was in cryptocurrency. So everyone's pretty tech savvy. Everybody knows the, the Google search uh, for, for, for the most part anyways. Um, so it's uh it, it's they're, they're they are interesting studies but i think that a lot of our demographic following in travala is quite tech savvy already no it's pretty interesting um we'll have to have a separate conversation later where we just go all in on travel stuff do you have your own podcast or ever you just talk about travel trends or whatever's going on in your neck of the woods there because obviously it's disjointed from the cryptocurrency ecosystem. I mean, I know I like to travel, but the stereotypical cryptocurrency investors just sitting at home looking at their 30 monitors. So <laughs> it's good to break that stereotype. No, we don't have a podcast, but um, yeah, we could work on that. What do you think, Shane? Yeah, yeah. You and Ben talk shit on that. Mondays. I don't know. We'll call it that. <laughs> Do a Twitter spaces thing. Just make it casual. People just show up and <laughs> say hi, ask, ask questions. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Seth, did you have any other questions on just Travel's uh, basic uh, business and stuff? I have a few more cryptocurrency and Monero questions too. Um, I don't think anything crazy right now. I mean, y'all y'all talked a lot about kind of trends. My, my other question that popped up was how COVID has been for y'all, but you mentioned that it hasn't really been a, a big hit to your business, which is good to hear. Um, so yeah, I don't think anything really specific past that. You know, keep rolling, Justin. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, your business has persisted through COVID. I wonder, how, for, okay, really quick. Was it a big scare for you guys when travel really halted last year or um, how did you address that? It wasn't comfortable. Um, it's uh, certainly not. Uh, you know, that like when, when, when sort of everything started uh, shutting down, um, you know, for the first time in 100 years, uh, the World Health Organization used the word pandemic, uh, which is which is just a word like that, that we haven't seen in practice for so long. You know, it's uh, 
it, it's been the world, the word of like horror movies and video game, uh, sorry, and board games and these things. It hasn't been like a, a realized experience. Um, and so, so when it did start and there was just constant news reports about this airline's going broke, that airline's going broke, um, or, uh, you know, you can't go here, you can't go there. Um, you know, there, there, there was some panic. Certainly there was uh, like, like, like panic in, in the back of our minds, but lucky for us, it didn't really go into a dark place. Um, we're, we're in at the stage of our journey as well that when COVID hit, um, we were able to actually hire more people and start building some things, sort of use the, those couple of months that we ended up having as downtime to, to strengthen some things, to, to get some stuff right. Where like a company like Booking.com or Expedia that was, you know, listed on a, on a stock exchange, um, and, you know, was really sort of running on quite tight margins. They needed to be letting people go, cancelling projects. Um, all these kinds of negative things that you never want to have in business. We, we weren't really in a situation where it looked like that was going to be the case. Uh, I mean, you know, I guess had it gone on for, for a couple of years or, 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 or I'm not sure what the time was, we might have ended up in, in a similar situation. But I, I think everyone sort of knew there was time. Um, but, you know, th there is that fear factor. Like, uh, what if demand for my product never comes back? Uh, but no, it didn't eventuate into anything um, tangible for us. Very luckily, yeah, it definitely gave us it gave us a chance to build while other people were putting out fires. But I, we were also kind of blessed with the fact that there was a crypto bull run as well. Uh, so coupled with that, it yeah. definitely it definitely helped. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. It was around the COVID time too that we actually uh, merged with Travel by Bit, which was a, a large stake that was was done by Binance and stuff as well. So adding to why we kind of felt comfortable is, I mean, like as Shane mentioned, that was the crypto bull run and that was starting to start. I think everyone sort of knew that if things got really bad, you know, we did kind of have that big brother at that point in time who, who would be able to sort of step in and, and potentially have stepped in and, and helped this out. So yeah, we we were in a good place. That's good to hear. I'm glad that you guys persisted through so we have an ally to you know, keep fighting another day here. <laughs> um, yeah, grab an error. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> um, going back to cryptocurrency payments, you clearly process quite a few and you encourage people to use it for commercial reasons, right? For people to actually buy things with them. What are the, some of the biggest adoption challenges that you've seen for cryptocurrency payments? Because I'm, you're at the front lines of this and you probably have a really good uh, insight over, you know, conceptions and what people are actually doing and using cryptocurrencies for. I think one of the biggest things is overcoming the psychology that's been embedded in people for so, uh, such a long time with cryptocurrency. Um, through, through the different ebbs and flows of the market, um, everybody's been looking at the price, right? Like what, what's, what's a project doing? The, you have a core belief in a project, but what, what kind of tangible use case or value does it actually have? Now we're actually moving away from what, all, what it has relative to fiat and what it actually can do for you um, in, the, in the terms of the use case. Now, you're at, and now you can actually do your, um, you, you, you can travel the world. You can shop online. You have uh, you have so many different types of use cases. So turning that on its head, moving away from speculative value to how am, how am I actually going to be able to use this cryptocurrency and the projects that I truly believe in for real world use cases? So I think that's been the the main the main um, hurdle with some uh, with some of the projects is getting to people to the belief system that they can actually use that for something else then just converting it back to a dollar value. The, the, the other obstacle, um, and I think Shane, you might agree with me on this, but uh, is uh, sometimes we will we'll get a token on board who's really keen to um, you know, add the use case to their, their token, um, but it can sometimes be quite hard to, to get them uh, to the point that they're ready for payment. Um, there are liquidity issues there. 
Uh, there are like complexities of different blockchain issues there that, that are getting them into, into payment. Um, and so sometimes the technicals become quite complicated, even if, even if we, we get through what Shane's just spoken about right there, um, you know, letting them see the, the benefits of this, uh, to their, 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 their project, to their communities, um, you know, the, <laughs> and, and those, those issues can be, can be quite stressful and can take a very long time, um, for, for us to, to work through. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say they're, they're really the, the two things, um, that, that we would face. Yeah, and hope for even those people who are more like of a speculative mindset and getting into that, uh, just the the use case of spending it in a bull run on things like travel is a, a really nice way to be able to directly spend it. Again, like you said, you don't have to swap back for, for fiat at an exchange and then deal with wiring that to your bank and then deal with paying with your credit card. And um, it's it's just really nice to be able to directly pay for something with a cryptocurrency that's more rare than it should be at this point, I feel like. Uh, so it's been really nice. I've been using Travala quite a bit recently and it's been been great to just open up my Monero wallet, send the payment, call it a day and not have to worry about all of the other complexities that normally come in with wanting to pay with cryptocurrency somehow for a merchant that doesn't normally accept it. So it's just, it is a really nice experience once you get used to actually spending cryptocurrency. And it is something not a lot of people are actually familiar with doing because it is just really a stock to a lot of people. Um, it's not actually a, a tool. So yeah, it's, it's great to have people like, like y'all really pushing for that change in mentality to, you can speculate on this, but it's also really nice to just be able to use it and spend it and actually get the, the, the purpose out of the cryptocurrency that's, that's really there, especially for something like Monero, where it's, it's a, it's a form of payment is what it is. So it's nice to be able to use that directly. Yeah. That's what we try to gear a lot of our marketing towards as well. It's just uh, for, uh, for our crypto Twitter, it's just, and reminding people that they can uh, that they can book a holiday using different types of cryptocurrencies and giving them an idea of what they can actually use it for as opposed to just blanket statement go and use this for travel give them an idea of where they can go what they can do and what's in the inventory uh and it's definitely been helping helping convert that's awesome um you mentioned liquidity issues as some issues with using other tokens do you ever run into fungibility issues with using other tokens do you have to check like have you ever received tainted coins from someone because you have to probably turn around and sell those on an exchange are you aware of any issues you've ever seen on your end there uh, i don't believe that that has happened um I, i'm certain people have tried to do that uh but i, I think we've been out to, to report that and sort of rejected the payment. Yeah, so no, having that. So you'll just you'll check payments as they're incoming and make sure that they meet some kind of risk score and handle it upfront. Makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, that's another thing. So like, if, if we do get new tokens on, like say perhaps a project that's that's coming up the uh, the charts. Uh, I don't know if that's a saying. Um, uh, you know, and they, they are on Travala. Um, they, they do apply uh, sort of a minimum spend and a maximum spend and stuff to them as well. So that if, you know, ever something did go through, uh, the risk would be uh, minimized. And it is probably for fungibility is one of the reasons why uh, that, that was built in. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, and then final broad question here. Uh, what does privacy mean for both you, Ben and Shane? Is is it something that you find really important um, in general, or is it just something that you didn't really know about or know too much about? Shane, privacy. Um, you know, I it that is a it's a pretty broad question, and I mean, how 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 uh, how far in depth do we want to go with this? Yeah, you know. Privacy from a transaction uh, perspective is is going to be paramount, but at the end of the day, you're going to need to go. Uh, you're you're booking with your name and your uh, your name for both um, accommodation activities and uh, and flights. We're not going to hold any of that. Uh, we're not going to hold any of that information in the transaction um, for any any longer than GDPR compliance allows us to. Um, but uh, 
yeah, you know what? I, I, I don't have too much to, to say on that matter. Uh, ben? Yeah, so like, are we talking about sort of uh, privacy in general or privacy in the context of your yeah, privacy in general? Beautiful. Um, look, I, 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 I do spend a lot of time, um, a lot of time like, like sort of thinking about this and stuff as well. Like, I think as a society, we have given up a lot of privacy with things like social, social networks. We've given up things like privacy when every single like shopping shop you go to wants you to sign up for their like rewards program or their re rewards newsletters or or all that kind of junk. Um, and if you don't kind of participate in these things, you do sort of uh, kind of segregate yourself from society. Like social media, that's where your friends are at. If you want to socialize, you got to be there. Um, so I think an awareness of privacy and the way things work is is really really important. So um, things like uh, Facebook or, or like I don't use it anymore, but, but Instagram, these things, I have like top tier privacy settings on. Um, ever so often, I use Facebook more to talk to people. If someone comes up and I don't remember who that person is, I'm blocking them. I'm, I'm blocking and removing them. Um, you know, I'm really sort of drilling down to who I want to sort of have in this circle and. Um, regularly going in and checking those privacy settings and making sure it's really hard to see what I'm doing if I don't know who you are. But then you have to be exposed to the world, particularly in business, particularly in like what Shane and I do and what you guys do as well too. And what's brought us here, you know, you got to meet people and, and uh, you know, kind of take those risks. So on things like Twitter or, or LinkedIn, I'm, I'm far more sort of liberal um, with, with my exposure there and stuff. And these are deliberate decisions I, I've kind of made. And the reason why I'm giving these use cases here is I do think it needs to be something that people think about and deliberately sort of have a plan for as well. But like once your identity is out there, you're, you're, you're kind of done. Um, so I think privacy is like a, like a scale and you've got to really sort of judge each situation that you're in and, 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 and which way do you, do you fall on that particular topic and, and kind of have a healthy relationship with privacy. I'll say one more thing on it is I think it's like uh, going to the gym, right? You know, if you, you, you go to the gym to get fit, the moment you hit your goals, if you stop, you know, like you, you're just going to go back to being a fat slob like me. You know, you, you've got to keep going, keep thinking about it, build the habits to think about what you're doing and, and really sort of protect your identity, but know when you're, you're prepared to take a calculated risk. Well, I wish you went first. On, I wish you went first on that one, there, Ben. Oh. <laughs> because I agree with every, everything you just said. I mean, clearly we have Seth for privacy here. He's very interested in the privacy side of things. So we always like to it's ask in the name. What, <laughs> exactly. So we, we want to make sure that we're asking questions about what people, what privacy means to to the people who are on. Uh, this show. So um, I think, you know, Ben and Shane, I really appreciate the two of you being on. We usually like to give people that are on a, a chance to ask. I mean, we can't represent all of them in our community, of course, but ask members who are busy and doing things in the Monero community quite often um, questions. So are there any questions that you would like to ask you haven't asked um, of like a Monero community member? <laughs> wow. Um, look, I, I love this. So one of the, the things that Shane and I were talking about um, really recently is that, you know, Monero is always coming up and we don't know anyone from the project, right? Like uh, we, we, with many of the other projects where we have like uh, Telegram chats with, you know, our, our key decision makers and like Monero's key, de sorry, another project's key decision makers. And we do sort of come up with promotions. We talk about what's going on. We, we want to really be um, in the loop. So I, I would probably like, I'd love to know if we could set something like that up uh, with the right people, um, they, whether they're like a senior developer, like someone who's a, who's a key decision maker who can uh, help us put that stuff together. And I imagine being a privacy token, uh, you know, a lot of those people don't like to, to show their face, but yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if there's something we can do there so that we can work together more. Yeah, I think we could definitely work out something like that. I mean, I'm not sure who exactly would get involved. I mean, like Justin and I are two of the more publicly active people. Um, so that we would definitely, I mean, I would be game to to do something like that, but we could see who else we could pull in. Um, if y'all are on Matrix, which is a chat protocol, or, or Element, which is the normal client, that's kind of the normal hangout for Monero people. So that'd be really easy to just set up a room there. 
Um, or we could just also maybe schedule something in the future, but be good to be good to chat and at least stay in touch with y'all, especially around network upgrades and, and that sort of thing. It'd be good to have a, a direct line be great yeah we've got to keep the conversation going guys like i want to get you guys to that million a month <laughs> no I, I think that's a really good point i want to get to the point that that's a bad month for monero yeah that's awesome i i think that that's definitely a, a point that we've historically struggled with is it's hard to pinpoint a good way to, to contact members that are involved in the monero community and so i think um i like to hope we've gotten better we had we're able to schedule this right but but still there's there's clearly room to make it easier for people and so we'd love to hear more um after this interview too about just how we can better do that right because we want to make sure that for people that are interested in supporting monero that it's easy for them it's not just a huge challenge right so it's very important to us too um so thank you ben for that um shane did you have any questions on monero at all <laughs> I was actually going to ask Seth. Um, you, you mentioned that you've been using Travala here in the last little while. Uh, I wanted to know what your experience has been. It's been excellent. I mean, I had heard from other people that like similar sites that kind of proxy travel can be problematic, and that people have had issues with getting tickets. Not specifically with Travala, but just similar things. So I was a little bit hesitant at first. Um, so I started with smaller trips that wouldn't be as big of a deal, but. No, it's been great. Tickets have been on time. I mean, it's nice. Somebody reaches out and actually sends my boarding pass via email. Um, so I haven't even had to check in, which is a nice little extra extra bonus there. Payments have been super fast. Um, bookings have been quick and easy. Prices have been comparable with other sites that I'm checking. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, like I mentioned, um, I went to, to Vegas for DEF CON a couple weeks ago now. Um, booked that whole trip, hotel, airline, everything with Travala, and it was seamless. Yeah, I have no problems at all. I'm using it for family trips, use it for vacation soon, hopefully. So yeah, it's been a it's been a really nice experience and kind of a surprisingly seamless one because I feel like a lot of the merchants and cryptocurrency sometimes can be a little weird with how things are actually handled. And it it very much feels like a a, a crypto native platform. Like it, it's not just like a, oh yeah, and you can also pay with cryptocurrency. Like y'all obviously take it seriously, which has made it really nice to to use. I have no complaints at this point. It's been very seamless. Oh man, love that feedback. That's great. <laughs> Well, glad uh, glad that you're uh, glad that you're using it. Glad that you're finding it um, uh, helpful and and seamless as well. So appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you so much, Ben and Shane, for being on. I think this is really good to help um, you know put your face to the, this project. I'm sure they've seen promoted on Twitter and Reddit and other places. You, I feel like you've done above average, certainly getting your name out there. So um, yeah. this will hopefully help in, in, in that too. So we appreciate the two of you being on and uh, where can people learn more information about Travela or, or ask you questions if they need you or uh, get support. <laughs> yeah, jump on to Travela.com. Um, I think, uh, yeah, head on over. Uh, loads of information um, there on the product. You have 3 million plus travel products, T and I start adding to your wish list. Um, but look, if you've used an OTA before, I think you're going to know how to, how to use Travela.com. Yeah. Use, uh, use the, the online travel agency. I mean, follow us on Twitter. We, uh, we have act, active promotions going on there all, all the time. And if you just want to look at some good destinations, follow us on Instagram as well. Perfect. All right. Thank you, you two for being on. We, we, we really appreciate it. And this will be up soon. Take care. Thanks, Thanks. all you guys. Thanks, guys.